Hello, just wanted to um, make a video on something I've made recently. Uh, it's a, an enclosure for my 3D printer. I was having trouble with the ABS printing, constantly lifting off the bed or just failing completely. So I've got some examples of lots of failed prints here. So this was the same thing that I tried to print several times. It just curled up off the bed. Uh, I've got lots and lots of examples of this where it just completely failed. So several prints. <coughs> And I was doing everything. I was heating the bed up. Uh, it was going over up to 110 degrees and it couldn't maintain the, the heat. Um, and no matter what I did, it just failed after 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, and I couldn't control it. Uh, so in the end, I thought I'm gonna make an enclosure. So I had a look on YouTube and there's not so many um, people making enclosures, certainly not cheap anyway. Um, so I've decided to uh, share what I did with you guys today. So here we go. So the first thing I did was I measured my printer. So the, the full footprint that it takes up. So the full width, the full length, and the full height. So I got that as measurements. Then I, I went on to um, B&Q. Uh, and in the roofing section, they sell these polystyrene sheets, uh, which is meant to go into roof slats um, for insulation. But it's, uh, it's just a polystyrene or foam sheets whichever you want to look at it um, and they sell these really really thick ones here so these are 50 mil thick uh, and again great insulators of heat so almost the perfect choice really uh, and this came in a big 12 uh, 1250 mil by 750 i think it was uh, i have to have a look on uh, on the website they've got a few of them have a look on the b q's website there but uh, just make sure you get the the, the 50 mil thick ones uh, and then put your four sides out of the box and I'll show you what I did after that. And so here is the finished article. So I cut my my four sides out and then I just join them like so, just putting them up against each other. And then uh, to hold them steady, what I did was I bought some uh, some of this dowel, 80 pence dowel. So not very wide, um, and I used that for stability. So what I did was I I drilled a hole. You can probably just see it here. So I drilled a hole, which went right through both sides, and then just pushed a piece of dowel through after cutting it down to length. So I pushed it through. So I did that three times all around the sides, all the way around. Um, and then to uh, to make it solid, I took some of this stuff here, this gap filling expanding foam, which by the way is really really horrible to work with. I mean, look at the look at the waste rag I generated from it. And now this is just a solid mess, a congealed horrible crap, which you don't want to get it on your hands. It's just horrible. Wear gloves, wear clothes that you're not bothered about. Uh, Getting messed up because I've ruined ruined a few few pieces of clothing using this stuff. I can just show you now. Uh, I can't. So, well, anyway. So going back to the uh, to the box. <coughs> so what I did was I just uh, I laid it on its side like so, and I just got the nozzle of the gun and just squirted it all the way the length of every every piece along the top there. Um, until it was just a, it was a big dry solid structure and this is the result now so one thing I will say is a piece of advice don't do what I did um, I cut the sides with a bit of a blunt blade and it's left a bit of a kind of horrible jagged edge there which I wish I'd have been able to tidy that up get a bit neater but nonetheless it still works um, and once I did that, so the printer, it sits neatly inside the printer, uh, over the top of the printer here. And so the next step was the lid. So I took some of this thinner, thinner stuff. So this is only 25 mil thick. I cut a square, which wasn't quite big enough. So I had to cut a joining piece, which you probably can't see on the camera, but oh, there you go, you can just see it there. Uh, same technique. I drilled through, pushed some dowel down into it to hold it steady, 
Um, but then in this time, instead of using the expanding foam, uh, I used some spray mount. So I literally just sprayed each edge, clamped it together, pushed the dowels through the top, which you can just see there, just about on the camera. Um, and now it's just one solid lid. And there we go. So, by no means an airtight fit, but uh, it doesn't really need to. It's good enough, the gap all around it is not so bad at all. Um, and what I do to monitor the prints is uh, just literally slide it away like that, expose a little hole, and you can get down inside and have a look inside the box. See how the print's going. And uh, yes, it's very handy. So here we are. That's the box, it simply sits over it, so you can see how much of a tight fit it actually is. So I managed to get the power cable in, all the cables down the side. And the most important thing is the bed it can go to its full extension without hitting any parts of the box. Okay, it's very well measured. So the only other thing I had to consider is the filament and, uh, and how that goes through the box, uh, which I'll show you uh, later on. So here's the lid, sits over the top. And there we go, self-contained. Okay, so the final um, thing I wanted to solve was the filament was snagging on the bottom of the box uh, when it was printing. Uh, it was just pulling through and it was catching on the bottom here. Uh, so I had to put like a, a wedge underneath it just to kind of hold it off the floor a little bit. Uh, and the way I solved that was um, I drilled a hole into the side of the box and uh, you can just see here I've got some uh, plastic tubing which acts like some uh, bushing which just uh, allows the filament to go through the box uh, without snagging and uh, I did that fairly easily uh, just get this this stuff from b and it's just it's tubing it was uh, 97 pence per metre and I've used uh, 5 centimetres of it so plenty left for future projects and uh, yeah so I just drilled a hole into the side of the box uh, just to make it a bit neater uh, cut that to size spread it with a bit of spray mount shoved it in the hole and now it should just act as like a, a filament feeder because the reel is going to be on the outside of this box uh, which means I can put this flat to the floor um, so uh, so yeah I was pretty happy with it uh, the first test uh, was this uh, circle and uh, square test thing you can do and uh, you can just see here that it is a really really good print it's completely flat so there's no nothing warped or lifted anything at all and this filament is great it's uh, from rigid ink it can be uh, extruded at 235 and i had the bed at 100 uh, and it was absolutely fine absolutely fine i'm so pleased with it so this is like that, that was literally the first attempt so the second thing i printed was uh, the thing i'm using right now um, which i can show you is uh this little block of abs that i made so it's just the uh the width of the uh, iPhone, so I can just kind of slot it in, and then I, I built a hole into the bottom of it, and I can just screw it onto this, uh, this tripod here. And as you can see, this this print went really well as well. If I can get it in focus, so there you go. So nice straight lines. So I had a build plate on it, but uh, I normally do with all my prints, even if it's PLA. Uh, so yes, all in all, I'm uh, I'm, re I'm really pleased with how the um, the box turned out. So uh, if you'd like to make one, then uh, go to B and Q to get the foam. Uh, so you probably need two sheets of it. Mine was fifty centimeters by fifty, I think it was, or I added maybe five centimeters of play so I could get all the cabling in to make sure it was the uh, bigger than the footprint of the printer itself. Uh, so 55 by 55 i think i did in the end um and so the sheets were three pounds 50 per sheet the expanding foam was 10 pound for the whole obviously the whole uh cylinder uh, and i probably used for a tiny bit of it um 
Uh, and the other thing was the, the tubing, like I said, that was 97p for the meter. Uh, and the, the thinner stuff, um, I only used one sheet of it in the end, and that was £2 something. Uh, so all in all, uh, less than £20, and uh, you can get yourself a decent printer enclosure that you can keep uh, an eye on it as well by sliding the lid off. Uh, in the next project, I'm probably going to build a monitoring 3D camera, uh, a network camera that uh, lives on a Raspberry Pi, so I can just monitor it over the network, see how the prints go without lifting the lid. Um, and I might make a video on that too. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.